Raf here from PropMaker, a channel that actually teaches you how to restore stuff and make stuff. This week is all about <laughs> this week is all about creating a pinball playfield rotisserie on the cheap. So you can see that this thing needs a lot of cleaning. We're going to tell you how to actually create the table that allows me to put it on to a place where I can actually start my cleaning. Roll the thing. So next, part two in our restoration of the 1979 Williams pinball machine called Time Warp. We're gonna get stuck into cleaning, but before we can do that, we need to build a platform that actually allows us to pull the playfield out of the cabinet and work on it. So resting it on a new platform of its own, where basically you can work on the surface of the pinball machine and the wiring underneath. And what people do when they're working on these things, if you're a pinball tech or someone who's an enthusiast in pinball, is that they have what's called a pinball rotisserie. And it's exactly as it sounds. It's a platform that allows you to set the, uh, the play field from outside the cabinet and onto it. You can basically bolt it down to that and it becomes a platform where you can spin it over, work on the wiring and then spin it back and then work on the play field itself. Now, normally these playfield rotisseries cost in excess of any, anything from $200 to, to $700 US, depending on how fancy or how secure they are. Some of them actually are stands, some of them actually fold out from walls, some of them actually are connected to workshop benches. But what we're going to do today is do something on the cheap because I don't really want to spend any more money than I have to on the tools that I'm using to restore this pinball machine. I would rather actually uh, use the money on the restoration itself. So I've actually gone ahead and actually already built this in my previous restoration of the Williams Jungle Lord out there in the back background. So I built one last year. Now that I'm running a channel, tell you how I did it. I did it for around 120 Australian dollars, which I think equates to about 80 to 90 dollars american um so now oh before i go before i get into that this video ha was actually uh, based on uh, another few videos that i saw on the internet building something very very similar but in the interest of completeness with this series of videos i'm going to show you what i actually built out of those i will reference the source videos that i watched in order to make my pinball rotisserie down in the show notes so dig deep in there if you want to see the original versions there's probably more us and canadian references in those videos so this is a bit of an aussie perspective of the same sort of video um, with australian products and australian shops that we actually uh, have here let's get to it all right so what have we got here for our pinball rotisserie on the cheap I bought to start with the base of this thing is is uh, built upon a, a Zito Mitre saw stand that I sourced here at Bunnings in Australia for about 80 Australian dollars. Very very handy piece of kit. It allows you to lengthen this uh, this uh, stand. It, uh, it has a couple of channels here on either end that allow you to fit its accessories into which all uh, are terminated with a nice 30 mil by 30 mil tube uh, for holding its rollers and things. But we're not gonna use any of that. We're just going to use the base stand itself. So we've got the base stand. It also came with these handy uh, platform clamps, which allow me to have a, a couple of, uh, I guess, um, supports here that I could rest a bit of a bench on, and then I could rest all my tools as well, which is pretty handy. What else did I buy? I bought some 30mm by 30mm uh, box tubing out of steel. Um, this was definitely quite cheap um, and it fits perfectly into the end clamp uh, housing here at the end of either end of the stand. I then also bought some L-plate by the slotted stuff because it actually becomes uh, very, very handy for 
uh, resting the things like the little hooks on the end of the play field straight into these and clamp them down to make them quite safe. Uh, I've also bought some wing nuts and a big long bolt and, um, and this is for either side and some pretty big washers. So you might have uh, seen there's a bit of wood here and that is because when I actually put my first Jungle Lord playfield that I was working on onto this, it ended up being just slightly an inch or two just too long. So it just didn't, didn't actually make it and it wasn't actually a safe fit. So I added this piece of wood here as a spacer on, uh, on one side and I was going to do it on both sides but I just didn't need to in the end. So what did I actually do? I first of all I grabbed my box plate and I sawed it in half as I mentioned earlier and then I used my drill press to drill a hole straight through the end from one side to the other and that hole needed to be large enough to hold this bolt that went right through the end and through uh, the wood and also through the box plate and ended up meeting my wing nut on the other side with some washers. The, the same pretty much story with the L plate is that I bought one length, I think it was a metre, and I just sawed it in half and I uh, pretty much made sure that there was a, a hole right at the centre point of that. Um, and that's just the symmetry. Um, but this then gives us our platform to hold our play field. And that's pretty much the extent of making a pinball rotisserie on the cheap. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pull out the pinball play field and we're going to place it onto here and using these G clamps I'm, uh, I'm going to secure it down so that we can actually spin the play field around safely. Now I'm just going to uh, move a camera so that we can all see this. Okay, alright, so we have our pinball play field over here and we're going to just lift it up and we're going to make sure that all the cabling is been basically pulled out and removed um, and is free to travel with the play field itself. We do that by lifting up the play field as if we're working on it in the, uh, in the cabinet. And we're going to go through and actually have a look at where the entire loom is going make sure that there's nothing that's connected directly to the cabinet and it looks pretty good so we're going to walk, hang those over there and just make sure that uh, all of these um, things are free but we'll go slow and we're going to basically now I know that they're free I'm just going to do that and just pull this out a bit really grubby really grubby so what are we doing now let's just see if we can pull it up pardon my butt looks like we're free and for now let's just rest this on here You can see that over here it's actually a little bit tricky because it um, looks like it's slightly different sizing. So what I'm going to do, just to be safe about it, I'm just going to rest this down here for a second on its side. The bits coming out. I'm going to widen up this. Just a little slightly. And you can see we're in a hook down here, which is exactly what I want to happen. And that's another one, so it's, it's hooked in on that side. And it's got a little bit of play, so I'm going to shuffle it a little bit to tighten it up. Not a good thing to 
where's your play field? So, tighten up the stand. We've got that going at the moment. So, at this point in time, all we're going to do is just very quickly secure it up with some clamps. If you're worried about pinball plastics and stuff, I think I am over here. I don't really want to clamp anything down on top of a plastic. So I'm going to remove them and and uh, but I will down this other end I'm going to clamp these for now Right, so we've got this actually just resting on this ledge, which is quite precarious. I have clamped one end down, so we've got some sort of comfort that, uh, that this is all right. But what I'm going to do, so I can clamp directly to this wood, um, I'm going to remove these two plastics. spider and uh, some some play field uh, bits and pieces so I'm gonna rest them over here on the bar my screws so I don't lose any screws and don't whatever you do don't lose anything it's hard enough uh, trying to source this stuff without actually adding to the problem um, so even screws can be a nightmare to find and replace Rest that on the bar again. Make sure your screws are next to it. And now we've exposed this wood, and it's quite easy to now clamp directly down to this piece of wood at the end. So that's what we're going to do using my G clamps. I'm just going to make sure that I can um, tighten this up as much as I can. tightening these two bolts and that just squeezes it a little bit so what we're going to do now is we're going to clamp this part to the wood using my G clamps Now 
yeah, you could protect the wood a bit more if you want to um, by putting a, another piece of wood effectively on top of the playfield. But this is actually never really seen, so if it gets slightly depressed or an indentation, not too fast. There are dead spiders and dead critters all through this machine. I'm seeing, so this is a pretty filthy job. <laughs> I'm going to move this over here a bit. Open in. Alright, that's pretty secure. down the other end. We're pretty secure now. Now, you notice it's quite uneven, so I'm going to heighten this so that we've got a bit of clearance uh, when we want to spin it, um, and and that's easily done just by loosening off the end knobs and raising up the playfield a bit. I think I'll even it up by doing this side first. see if she spins over so you can see I've got a few things to look at and that is any of these clamps these little things can get in the way but that's looking pretty good so I just draped my loom out to the side here um, but it's actually looking pretty decent as I want it so I can actually work on the underneath you can sort of see how it's all uh, looking under there and then I uh, spin it back around and I can work on this surface so in the next video we get stuck into the actual cleaning um, also if you absolutely love this uh, this sort of thing please like and subscribe so it really really helps me out and I um, I don't believe in saying to anybody anything about the YouTube algorithm. I don't actually, being a web guy, I actually don't believe half the algorithms stay the same from week to week. So uh, I don't actually think that that's actually going to make one iota difference with my searching for my videos. But if you like and subscribe, it makes me feel good. It also prompts me up in the ranks to actually allow you to uh, find me a little bit easier, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can see how grubby this actually is. It's pretty, pretty nasty. So, um, yeah, next video is going to be all about using some uh, cleaning techniques to get this as clean as I can and, um, and we'll take it from there. We're going to start dismantling after, while we're cleaning, we're going to start dismantling all the plastics off and uh and do all that but that's for the next video so ooh, just knock the camera with my foot not good i am learning with this youtube thing all right okay so that concludes our part two uh how to build a pinball rotisserie on the cheap uh next is going to be all about cleaning and stay tuned for that one um yeah roll the things see you next time